welcome to the Toss and Meg podcast. We're still here at Prescott, obviously, but we got Isaac Diaz on with us today. Isaac, you're uh, saying you got a horse coming up, right? Why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, um, yeah. My name is Isaac Diaz. I I live in Texas, and uh, yeah, I got a good horse today uh, in the saddle bronc riding. Won a championships called Wild Strawberry. Oh, okay. You've been on him before? A couple times, yeah. yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah, it's changed owners since I had it last, but but he's always, he's a little horse, but he tries really hard, stays real close to the shoot, so it should be good. Okay, cool. Where out in Texas do you live? Uh, just west of Stephenville, like 20 miles, in Desdemona. Okay, okay. We know some guys over there in uh, Morgan Mill. I know a guy. Yeah. No, Morgan Mill. I don't think it's far from Stephensville, so. Yeah. What, uh, have you been on some other ones before you got here, or is this where you're starting and going, or what are you doing? Uh, the last place I rode at was in Greeley uh, two days ago, so okay. we had yesterday off, just kind of eased on down here, So, which is nice because I've been in a hurry coming down here before, and that's not very fun. No? Who uh, who do you travel with? Uh, Shorty Garrett. Uh, I've gone with him for the last five or six years, and we just picked up a couple young guys, Brady Hill and Brandon Lansford, and so they, we got a couple drivers now. There you go. There you go. Where's the next one? Uh, tomorrow we're in Red Lodge and Cody. Badass. Yeah. Drive, fly, what do you do? Yeah, we're just going to drive. Just uh, we do have to fly on the 4th. Um, we can't make it from Kildare, North Dakota, to uh, St. Paul and to the afternoon perf. So we're going to drive to Bozeman and then fly the rest of the way. Okay. So uh, for the listeners out there, why don't you um, give them some kind of stats, you know, NFR stuff and, and things that you've won that, that meant something to you, you know, some big rodeos and things like that. Um, I guess I, I've been to the finals seven times. Uh, I've, I've been at it a long time. I've missed it a lot more than I've made it, but, uh, but yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've had a, you know, it's been, it's been a good way to make a living. It's, it's been, it's been worked out for, for my family over these years, you know, I've won enough to keep going and, uh, I've won a few big rodeos and stuff. And so it's just, what are the big ones that you've won that, I mean, one that sticks out in your mind, you know? uh, I guess one that really sticks out to me is Pinocchio, won Pinocchio a while back and, um, the college finals. Yeah. Yeah. But well, Pinocchio and Bucking Horses are monsters. Oh, God, they're big. They're huge. They buck. Really. For a bronc rider, it's, yeah. it's a good notch on your belt for a bronc rider because it's, yeah, they they run everything at you up there. Yeah. yeah. So how, how do you plan out your Cowboy Christmas? I mean, how do you plan out your trip? I mean, do you do that in a week, two weeks before? Do you start looking at rodeos and seeing if you can make this to make that? Or how, how does that work? When I was younger, I would sit down and, like, have this big plan, you know, and I'd write them all out. And, and uh, then once you enter the first one, it just explodes. That plan, you know, it's like, well, okay, I'm going to start over now, I guess. Because um, you don't get the days you want. You know, it's hard. Everybody's entering. for the, Everybody pretty much, they look at it and they're like, this is going to work. And everybody pretty much has a very similar plan. And so if you don't get up right at the first couple right away, it just yeah. throws all that out of whack. And so uh, we just kind of roll with it and we'll enter, enter in a way where we can't get doubled up. So anywhere we go... Uh, or anywhere we enter, we can make sure compete in, so we're not turning out uh, well, half of them. Like if you travel with all the other guys, and, and not just your schedule, or when you're up, they have to be up similar times because you have the same rig. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, which they, they let for up to four of us buddy together, so okay. so they won't split us. You know, which oh, okay. that makes it more complicated as far as getting your performances too, because they got to take four of you instead of one. Oh, so yeah, makes it harder. But. So the PRCA will let you get all get the same up. At the same time. Yes, sir. I got you. Yeah. Tell people, too, about when the draw comes out, and if you don't draw a good one and you don't think you can can win anything on the horse, especially now and later on in your rodeo career, like, you you might skip that rodeo, turn out that, that horse, and, and go to, uh, you know, go to another rodeo instead, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we we try not to turn them out as much as possible. Uh, if they're if they're a chance even to play slow, we're gonna get on them, and especially because especially this time of year, because whenever you turn out and you're bailing out on your crew, and so you're costing them more money on fuel, and and then and it's harder driving for for less guys, and so as long as it's not anything that you know, we know most of them, and there's a rap sheet on most of these horses, so as long as we know it's not something that is going to hurt us you know even if it's just something that uh is just a little weaker but good to ride you know we'll get on him you know and because you never know you can get a re-ride and get something good too so right that's that's kind of the, the the timed event you know you draw an hour before the rodeo and the rough stock you get how, how long is it do you usually it's three days before three the days first before. okay 
So you got kind of an idea of what you got. And you can just, probably kind of call around, and if you don't know him, I mean, I'm sure you know him. These guys all got videos, them, but, too. They'll send each other yeah, videos of the yeah. horse, and it's, it's pretty neat to watch. I'm, I'm a roughie at heart, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be a you know, just, you know, you know, I'm just rope, but anyways, I kind of, you know, you, you, you rope as well. Like, that's a, that's another reason why I'm a fan of, of you and kind of made the finals a few times together and stuff. But, man, you like to rope a lot. Uh, I'm a little different caliber than you. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. But no, I do love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's if you know when I get done riding Bronx, I'm gonna you know that's all I'm gonna do. Not not competitively like at rodeos, but you're damn good with a young horse too, and you train horses pretty good. So like that's, oh, yeah. that's kind of a it's it's you talk about your your wife. She runs trails too, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. So like that's it's it's good for y'all to kind of get the arena and do some stuff together too, right? Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, we've been. Well, we're going on 10 years, and so we... Have you guys ever made the finals together? No. No? No, that's... That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that's been on our bucket list big time, and I'm, I keep look, looking at the time clock. <laughs> Maybe I know you got as long as you want, to, but I'm coming up on my last few years. Yeah, so you could make it into their 60s. You need to start kicking better. a little harder. <laughs> no, she, hadn't, she hadn't even been, been rodeoing hard for several years since her good mare got hurt. Uh, but she's got a colt out of him, out of out of that mare that that she's uh, seasoning right now. It's a six year old that is looks promising. So hopefully she'll be back on the map soon. Are is you, she out rodeoing anywhere right now? She's uh, she's up in Delphiish in the morning. So she's she's in the Badlands circuit because she's from North Dakota. Okay. Um. So she's just going to those circuit rodeos this year. Oh, cool. Yeah. And trying to get some seasoned up. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hopefully next year she'll be able to get qualified, or she'll get qualified this year for the winter rodeos and be a little more out and about next year. I hope. Oh, cool. Yeah. Will you guys get to travel much together? Or you just kind of see each other in passing, or we try like we try as much as possible. Like kind of like like say for instance like the Utah run where it's everything's kind of close. You know, we'll do it that way. Um, it's hard for it's hard for us to enter together like all year. Yeah. Just because it's it's so much more costly for like for my side of it where I can, I can rodeo for a fraction of the cost as her, um, and then I can go to three times as many rodeos. Um, and so I'm not saying that she, like, not trying to say where she's holding me back, but, like, she, she'd she keep me from entering enough to be competitive. Oh, yeah, like, you'd ride, your, you'd ride your horse yeah. and need to wait. The time to you know, instead different. of jumping in a car. Yeah, well, she might run two or three times in one spot, you know. Right. And she might give them a slack and not even exactly. the first, right? You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's hard. It's, it's hard. hard. But we try to as much as we can because, yeah. yeah, I don't like being away from my kids no more than anybody else. So. Right. Hey, how many kids do you have now? Two. two. Two kids. That's pretty neat, right? Those are your gold buckles. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How old? They're four and two. Yeah. So they're at the fifth age right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're a lot of fun. Yeah, Whitley. Whitley is all, my, my daughter, she's four years old. She was all upset yesterday because she saved a little kitten in the barn the other day and, and she was bottle feeding this kitten and it, well, she, she come home from a friend's house yesterday and it didn't quite make it. And so we had a rough day over FaceTime yesterday. Yeah. Pretty rough well, day over there at the ranch. <laughs> yeah. Part, of it, part, part of being a ranch kid, right? Yeah. 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 And you kind of have to learn some of that stuff the hard way, I think. <laughs> yeah, but that is when they get fun, right? Like that age. Like I got some nephews. Like my nephew crew. Man, when he was little. I, I sure liked him a lot. But man, they're not really fun until they're like three and four. And they get a little like your know, personality to them. And all that. Did you do play any sports yeah. whenever you were a kid? Any other just rodeo? Yeah, I, I played baseball all the way up to high school. I played for a long time. Um, I grew up in South Florida, so baseball was. Yeah. You know, it was pretty happening down there, and so I, I, I love that. Too, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you either be a UFC fighter or a baseball player, and I'm going to be a fighter, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, you ever get to meet the Diaz brothers? No, no, no. I know. I need to reach out, you know. Yeah, we have the same skin tone, and I think they'll think I'm a cousin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm with Diaz. <laughs> yeah. That'll be pretty slick. After, after this one, got any... Big big ones coming up, or kind of what you run, or yeah, we'll go uh, we'll go to Cody and Red Lodge tomorrow, and then we go to Mandan and Kildeer, North Dakota, the next day, and then St. Paul on the fourth, and then we got a couple days off uh, before uh, Calgary. So any any draws right now that you know that you got kind of looking forward to the next couple days? Yeah, I'm excited, man. It's uh, I've got a couple that are just good to ride, um, and then I I got a, like I got a. One, I got a chance at first on at St. Paul um, nice. and Mandan uh, and Kildare, actually. So it's good to have them ones 
like those confidence boosters in between. Okay. You know, because if you just get throttled one day and then you have your best one the next, it kind of, you know, it, it plays on, you know, it's no different than kind of reading the line a little yeah. different on the team rope and, you know, well, you get into second guessing yourself. Keep keep a rhythm too, right? You yeah. Riding one every day, one or two a day, keeps the guy sharp, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. You know, yeah. 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 That's my favorite. Like I said, this is my favorite time of year. This, the next almost three months, man. A guy gets to rope something or like in your, your, your case, you get to ride something, you know, Pretty much for, for a month, you're going to go for 30 days. It's going to be 25 or 27 of the days you're going to be doing something. Yeah, like, it keeps you sharp. I love that part of yeah, like, absolutely. This, this season. Keeps you sharp yeah. and keeps you firing. Yeah. And if you're in the slump, you, you don't really have an excuse not to get out no, of it. Just you just got another chance the next day. So you got a good mindset, too. And I think uh, we were talking to a handful of people, you know, young guys yesterday, Kincaid, Henry, and Clay Cherry. Man, they're 20 and 21. Yeah, just mellow, having a great time, and I, I think the the younger generation are kind of figuring that out about mentally. You know, if you have a bad bad run or you get a bad ride, just shake it off. And yeah, for the next one. I, yeah. I, I was a little different. I kind of I lived and died on, on on how I did that day. You know, if I did good, I was happy. If I did did do good, I wasn't very happy. But no, I'm with you. I, I've seen the transformation just in the just in how people handle themselves. From like when we started, you know, we started about the same time. Yeah, I think you might have, like, we were right in there at the same time. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, every, yeah, every sport evolves, right? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the mental, the mental state of everybody and then the, just, just the horsepower and, and everything is just, is, is, is getting better and better. And the money, I mean, everything's getting better. Looking forward to the future of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking on that horsepower, um, what's kind of your top three? Maybe not even going right now, but just top three all-time bucking horses but in your mind. Uh, my all-time favorite is Medicine Woman of nice. Frontiers. I got to get on her three different times. and I, I think the, the, the best horse right now, in my opinion, is uh, she was the bucking horse of the year in the bareback riding. Uh, it's called Explosive Skies of Calgary's. Yeah, Clayton was, I think Clayton was talking about that. Yeah, I'm sure he's been on her before. Uh, they switched her to the bronc riding last year couple times actually i think they broke the world record on her last year and uh um now she's full-time in the bronx and she'll go to the nfr in the bronx riding this year and there's nothing really that compares to that one at the moment really yeah you notice how these bronc riders or they're like that bronc riders are talking about the mares yeah you know how good the mares are that's what a lot of people don't understand you know like the mares are really really good in the, in the, in the bucking horse well i think it was it was really cool when uh kirsten was on here and she's like i can just tell i can tell when those mares are ready to get off the truck like and they want to go like they need to go home you know it, she's they start fighting the shoot a little more they start getting a little harder to work in the back pins and she says so i'm gonna send you know this one home it's Clayton's draw. I forget the name of the horse, but Clayton's draw. And I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send that horse home and breed her and, and let her have chill out time. Yeah. You know. So that's pretty neat. That's, yeah. that's yeah. pretty you cool. Three three bears just right off the bat. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's yeah. Pretty um, cool. Yeah. It's it, well. It's, it's no different. I mean, I'm sure you've noticed that in, in a lot of the timed events as well. Like. I don't know. We, me and my wife both think that marriage just try hard. I think so. Yeah, I agree. I do too. So sometimes there's a little bit of nonsense you got to get through, but but they they're greedy. They try hard. They're smart. They pick it up. Yeah. You know what I mean, if you, you show a bad habit, they're gonna pick that up real fast. So you yeah. Be careful yeah. No doubt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I think uh, we better let you go get on one and spur one down, huh? Oh, just yeah. <laughs> Head from here and start stretching these old bones out. I guess. That's yeah. It's so good. I'm telling you, these guys metal. It's just awesome. He's, he's always been that way it's ever since I've been just happy go lucky, just happy, just climb on a horse, just spur. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm, that's just awesome. You know what I mean? I'd be so nervous and yeah, you know what I mean. I'm definitely a fan of your style. Like when like you watch you ride bucking horses at the finals and stuff, or wherever I get a chance to watch you ride. Um, you you got that style where your arms way out in the front, and if them horses give it to you, I mean it's it's pis picturesque. You know, it's it's the what rodeo is about, you know. I, you know, I like that I style. So, I, uh, I think you're doing a great job. I tell, I tell my friends, as long as they don't get out of time with me, I do pretty. Good. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, man. We'll go stretch out, and uh, we'll be watching you spur one down. I appreciate you coming by. Thanks, I buddy. appreciate it, yes. Thank you.